the Tom Likas Show. And here we go. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad. Son. Need some good advice. All right. I think I'm making a horrible decision. <laughs> well, you know, you don't have to call a talk show. If you're making a horrible decision, just don't make it. Ah, oh, man. But, you know, with the economy right now, and I just got laid off from my job. I'm a fashion designer in L.A. And uh, I've been hanging out with this chick, you know, whatever. We're both not too serious. We're both concentrating on our careers and our goals in life. And, uh... I lost my job. She wants me to move in. I have no financial stuff on paper. Like, I have no commitments. I could leave when I want. And she basically wants to take care of me. I mean, how, how am I supposed to refuse what that? What do you mean, take care of you? I mean, she wants to take care of bills. You know what I mean? She wants to give me a roof over my head. She, she will pay your bills. It's pay. her apartment. Her name's on the lease. Her name's on the lease. My name is nowhere on the lease. She already lives there. Which also means she can kick you out at any time. Well, I don't give a rat's ass. I can move on. All I'm right. sorry for that, but I, 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 don't give a, I don't give a crap. I can move on at any time, you know? You won't. Uh, yeah, I will. Why not? Because you're moving in with her now. Well, just to keep my money for play money so I can go out with the boys, you know, on the weekend. By the way, what is like it with that play that money? Do you, have, uh, do you have money put away? Do you have debts? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got money put away. You know How I much? Mean? I got a nice savings here. I got, How much? I'm not, I'm not a clown. I don't go How out much? and waste my money. How much? I got about, like, you know, 50K. Not much, but, you know, I have I have some money that I have a little a little. Pocket do you have any on. debt? No, I have no debt whatsoever. I don't uh -huh. even use credit cards. I, 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 pay, I pay cash for everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, she's clearly, uh, believe me, uh, there's no free lunch. No free lunch? Yeah, that's right. If she's offering to do something for free, she wants something in return. Yeah, well, she wants, she wants you know, constant sex at her. Well, at you her could do that without, you can give that to her without living there. Oh, of course I can, you know what I mean? But I think that's her whole purpose of moving me in. She's been bugging me to move in for the last, like, five months. So you're going to move in to become a gigolo? Basically, why not? You know what I mean? I'm young. I figure, you know, well, why not that, try something new? That if it's such a great idea, before. why are you calling me? Because I want to know if you think it's a bad decision. Like, I, I think, think moving in, I think moving in, by the way, this is your girlfriend we're talking about. Oh, uh, no, she's not labeled as a girlfriend. It's I really an yeah. awkward situation when people ask us if we're dating. We're both always like, no. Nah, What's nah, awkward about it? Like, if it's awkward, that means one of you is not comfortable with the fact that uh, you're not using the word girlfriend. It's probably her. Yeah, true, with the fact, you know. We right, both so don't want she, to get caught into that scene. No, we she, don't want to get she wants to be the girlfriend. Huh? If she's, oh, she, she, she probably wants to be the girlfriend. Right, well, don't I'm tell me she... Her. No, she doesn't know that. In fact, by agreeing to move in, she knows she uh, she got pulled off she the got, first step of the process. She got a step further. In life. Right. Well, that's what I'm thinking here. That's why I'm calling for my father's advice, man. That's you what know? I'm telling I mean, it's you. It's awesome because I'll be able to save the dough. You know, it's just going to make allow me to save more money. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, again, I understand what you mean, but I'm telling you, you are better off living with a roommate than moving in with somebody who wants to be a girlfriend. I That's hear you. because she will become a girlfriend. I hear you. And pretty soon, she's going to be monitoring your whereabouts and asking why you came home late. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> she probably will, but I'll tell her. You know, whatever. I don't drink. I, I I don't abuse drugs. You know what I mean. So I don't think she has too much to worry about. You know what I mean. Except for other girls jumping on my lap. You know. <laughs> yeah, but that uh, again, uh, she is going to worry about that because she's going to feel that because she's paying, that she has a right to certain expectations. Okay. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page, Dad. Taught me well. All right. So you need to not do this. Okay. I'm seriously not going to do it. Like I'm, actually, I'm actually on the way right now. I'm on the 10 freeway, and I was going to take some stuff down there, you know. And of course, I'm listening to Dad, like always, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to give him a call and ask him what his scoop is on it. That's my scoop on it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones here. Let's say hello to uh, Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. I'm doing okay. Man, I got this friend. 
I need advice. Okay. All right. He's my best friend in the world. His name is Danny. Best friend in the world. I'll do anything for him. He's got this girl. She just came into his life. Supposedly, I heard she's stripping. I go drive by the strip club. I see his car there. The car that he lets her use. Now, I would tell him, but he's happy, Tom. What do I do? What do you mean you would tell him, but he's happy? How do you know he doesn't know she's doing that? I, he hasn't mentioned it to me. Doesn't he, Maybe he doesn't tell you everything. Well, I mean, we talk about everything, and we always talk about his relationship. I mean, should I tell him this? We've gotten a, in an argument, an actual fist fight over this before, about each other staying out of each other's uh, relationships. Yeah, but you're not getting involved in the relationship. You're just going to tell him what you know. Don't tell him what to do. But I've ne truthfully, Tom, I've never seen him happier. And, and fine. <laughs> then, then well, why are you asking me this question? I don't know if I should tell him. Well, I just told you what I think. He's your friend. You don't tell him what to do. You don't interfere. You just tell him that you saw the car there. That's it. I, I don't know, man. Because we've, we've fought over this before. I've tried to tell him before, and he socked me square in my face. Square. Well, then, then uh, send him an email. Send him an email? Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> We're friends, though. We're best friends. Well, pal, I've given you all the possible scenarios here. Should I confront his girl first? No, that that is getting involved. So, so just send him an email, and everything's fine. Or, or send him an email, or tell him in person. But again, you just take a picture and send it to him. All right, Tom. I'm, I'm going to trust you on this one. By the way, are you sure that's the same car? Okay, this is how I know it's the same car. He's been saving up for this car since he was 16 years old. So it's a, it's an old car. It's a classic it's a, car. It's a classic 1965 Mustang. And she's driving it to a strip club. Yeah, but the thing is, it's in the city that he lives. But he he goes to he works in Santa Ana, and he goes to Rancho all the time. He's never in his city that he lives. He's never in the city where he lived. Well, maybe yeah. that's the thing he's not telling you. Maybe he and his girl go to strip clubs. Together? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. You've never, known any, you've never known anyone who does that? I've known... Well, the thing is, I have a friend that went to the strip club that's seen her. Seen her doing what? Seen her stripping. So he she is a around. stripper. Well, I... If we're my friend, I would tell my friend that, and then let him do what he wants to do, but I would not tell him what to do. Okay. I, I never tell people what to do unless they ask for advice. And if he punches me, should I punch him back? <laughs> that's that's between the two of you, son. <laughs> Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. John on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Good afternoon, Tom. John. Tom, I need some advice. All right. Um, I uh, just moved out here from Indiana about three years ago. Um, the, the job I have now, I've been, I've been working for this guy for about a year and a half. Um, I'm 23 years old, but I've been doing what I do for about 12 years, thanks to my dad, who owns the company back in Indiana. Um, I'm in a position now where I could, you know, I make decent money. I'm, I'm lead sales for all of Southern California and parts of San Francisco and Fresno. And, um, but I'm in a position now where I could tell my boss, um, Hey, I need you know a twenty five percent raise in salary or fifty percent raise in salary or a walk, and he would give it to me. Um, but uh, you know, in your experience, have you ever been in that position where you just want to build loyalty with your boss, and you know, so you don't ask for a raise? You know, I've never been one to ask for a raise. Um, no, I I don't believe in company loyalty. I believe in uh, you know you do a job and you get compensated for it during the time you are working. Uh, you do the best job you can. You work as hard as you can. You show up on time. You over deliver. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But you have to understand if, if this economy isn't teaching you anything, 
companies will put an axe in your back, and they wouldn't think twice about it. I, see, I mean, it's, it's not like a, a big... I mean, it's doesn't point. matter. If your boss uh, suddenly found himself in financial straits, he would call you in and say, I have to let you go. Well, see, the, the thing is, he, he's the distributor. He owns six states and, and over 30 dealerships. And it's it just doesn't so matter. Happy. Do you know how many car... Are you talking about car dealerships? No, no, no. It's a, a dealership, kind of like a franchise, but, but you know... What does he deal? Um, it's, a, it's a pet containment company. It's a pet containment company. Yeah, he he lives in Georgia. I, I run all of all of California for him. You know, he he basically can't let me go. And my dad's office. His name isn't Michael Vick, is it? No, 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 no. But uh, I mean, my dad's offered me six figures to go back to Indiana and, and take it over. I just I don't want to go go back there. You know, um, I just I don't know. You don't you don't believe in company loyalty, huh? No, I don't because I do believe that. Look at the economy now. And I, Look know, at the I'm companies. Little... Every day I open the paper and I see the names of companies that I thought were rock solid. Macy's, Circuit City, Linens and things. <laughs> I, and, you, you, and you suddenly you see they're closing down stores or they're going out of business or they're bankrupt or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't matter how well somebody did a year ago or five years ago. It's how they're going to do six months from now. And I'm telling you that companies, uh, in general, with few exceptions, no matter how loyal you are, nothing you've ever done will be appreciated. No good deed goes unpunished. It doesn't matter how much you do. Uh, nobody will remember any of the good work you did. They will just try to figure out how to put an axe in your back. Uh, okay. And I'm telling you, it's companies across America. Look what's happening. Yeah. So I'm telling you, uh, loyalty is not rewarded. Working hard your whole life for one company, not rewarded, not appreciated. You know, when companies start getting uh, desperate or they start running around like their pants are on fire, they start trying to figure out how to put you out of your misery. Okay. That's what they do. So what I believe is that you should get as much as you can get for as long as you can get it. Okay. Because that day will come when no matter how good you are, they're going to come up to you and they say, sorry, we're downsizing, we're right-sizing. You make too much money. I don't know why we're paying you so much. And then they will try to can you. Well, they won't even try to can you. They will can you. And, and look how many companies, look how many layoffs there have been. Yeah. Look! Look what's happened to the unemployment rate. Seven point two percent, something like that. Well, I mean, it, 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 this, it, 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 there's no stopping it. Mm -hmm. Don't you think everybody who's getting fired is a bum? Yeah. I mean, there's lots of people like you out there who work hard, do a good job, uh, are in demand. And if, if you ha if you have an opportunity, uh, by the way, in this economy, I'm amazed you think you can get a raise. But if you think you can get a raise, you have to get every you you have to get everything you can get right now. You have to get everything you can get while you can get it, because the day will come. No matter how nice you think this guy is, no matter how nice a company you think it is, the day will come when the guy sells his company. Well, the day will come when the guy hires an axe man to work for him. I mean, he's he's already he's already offered offered me dealerships out here. I just you know in my in my situation, I don't think I'm ready to manage employees and all. You know, he, I mean, he's really pressuring me to go back to school, and I think I'm going to do that. Um, but I mean, I'm sitting on a gold mine. I don't know where to dig. I was I was telling Dino, I got a, a chairman of a baseball team, a major league baseball team that wants to partner with me. And you know, and, I mean, it's just a gold mine opportunity. All right. Um, but, you know, I mean, he knows my dad. He knows, I mean, he used to work for corporate and, and you know, this guy. So, uh, I don't know, but. Well, I, I say if you can get a raise, get it. Okay. Get it now. All right. Good luck. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 
at one 800 5800 Tom. Wide open telephones on the Tom Lager Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. Shorter commercial breaks, we take the calls faster, we take more calls. If you've ever tried to get in on the Tom Lager Show, this is the best time because we take so many calls, we keep freeing up spaces for you. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Alan on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Father, how are you? Doing okay, sir. Hey, uh, I had a quick question. You you mentored, and uh, I take some of your pros and cons off your show, and uh, let me just spit out that I'm 29 years old, I'm married, and uh, we're currently renting a property. I'm pretty successful, uh, excellent credit, have uh, yeah, 60, 65000 saved up in the bank. I uh, really wanted to get into a home, and uh, from a, a father standpoint, uh, I'd love to get your advice on now is a good time, or do I need to wait even longer? Well, here, here, number one thing, Alan, you, you've got no debt, right? I've got maybe four grand in credit card debt. What, why? Why? Yeah. Uh, I'm guilty like everybody else. Yeah, but Everyone the point is, home. you've got savings. I do. How much are your savings uh, getting for you in interest? Very little, Father. How much? Uh, whatever the credit union provides. Probably Which about is, four and a quarter. No, 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 no. You're not getting four and a quarter. You have a check lately. <laughs> Even lower, huh? No, no, way lower. Try about 1% or less. Ooh, that's even worse. Yeah. Now, uh, your credit cards, what's the interest rate on those credit cards? Uh, I don't believe it's anything. It's an American Express. So you pay it off in full at the end of each month? Uh, correct. So the debt you have is not revolving credit. The debt you have, you will pay off by the due date, and then you'll have zero debt again. There you go. Okay. All right. I do that, too, by the way. I do that, too. All right. So, you have, you, so in other words, when I talk about debt, I'm talking about debt that is generating finance charges. You don't have any. No, sir. So you've got no student loans, no car loans, nothing. Uh, just paid the car loan off, sir. So you've got nothing? Nada. Okay, that's question number one. Okay, question number two, uh, when you talk about buying a house, are we talking about buying a house in a neighborhood you absolutely love, a place you could see yourself living a minimum of five years, hopefully ten or more? Yeah, and, and we can afford it right now. And also, I guess, to, to sort of throw the ringer out there, the city has the first-time buyer programs where they'll throw in like an extra forty or fifty grand right now, so you're not suffering. Well, I guess that wouldn't affect us, but I qualify for that currently, to where you wouldn't get the PMI insurance. So, right. you know, that would help bring your payment down a little bit as well. Right. And, and then they also also throw the property tax and what's called an impound account, so you're not really paying property tax essentially every year either. That can roll into your monthly payment. So, what do they do with the property tax? I believe they put it the way the county does it, or the city rather, is they throw it in a, what's called an impound account, and then that's just added on to your monthly payment every month for a small amount of fee, and then that sits in an account, and then I'm not quite sure how much interest that draws, and then that that pays the property tax each year. Wow. All right. But with, but with the current economy in crisis, you know, my credit score is only about 780, 790. I just... It's, I, I'm real hesitant. I, I wanted to get some advice from the father. Well, I mean, now you've answered uh, the two most important questions. Do you have no debt? The answer is yes. Uh, do you um, have a plan to buy a house you plan to live in for a minimum of five years, hopefully ten or more? You said yes. Yeah. Uh, those are the only people who should be buying houses. Uh, the people who uh, want to buy a house, uh, that phrase, starter home, uh -huh. out. No. Uh, the, <laughs> forget about that. Yeah. Uh, no, this is long term. I just uh, all right. I, I I just don't want to be the one that's going to get stuck in getting it and then it, it depreciating another thirty or forty but, fifty but, grand. But what? It's not a. <laughs> you, you have to start thinking big, okay? And uh, when I say thinking big, I don't mean thinking like a jerk. I mean, remember, if you're going to own the house for five to ten years. It's going to go up and down in value over that period of time. It's going to fluctuate. If you're going to stay in the house, it doesn't matter what the price of the house is. Uh, the, the that's only, probably a good time is what you're telling me. Well, yes. The only people who worry about whether a house is going up or down in value are people who are planning on selling it. Yeah. Like, I have a house I bought for $624,000. At the peak, it was probably worth about $2.7 
Uh -huh. By now, it's probably dropped to one point five million. And people say to me, well, "My God, aren't you worried about that? You had two. <laughs> you should have sold when you could." And I said, "The only person who has to worry about the price of this house is the executor of my estate, because it won't be sold until I'm dead." <laughs> gotcha. All right, and so you see, you shouldn't be worrying about that. Okay. The only people who have to worry about how much a house is going to depreciate are people who plan to sell it. Yeah. If you plan to sell it, you shouldn't be buying one. Gotcha. So if you're planning on finding the place of your dreams, a place you love in a neighborhood that's likely to stay good for that amount of time, uh, this is the best time ever to buy a house in your lifetime right now. Good. Uh, hearing, hearing that from you makes me feel a little bit better. Because so, uh, interest rates are the lowest. Mortgage rates are the lowest since they began keeping records. Yeah, I, I haven't heard officially from our, our person yet, but there's numbers bouncing out between four and a half and right. five right now. You're talking about a fixed rate, correct? Yeah, 30 year fix. Yeah, I wouldn't be playing with, uh, uh, you know, those adjustable rate mortgages or any of those crazy uh, deals uh, that, that got people in trouble. Fix. You get a fixed rate mortgage. Yeah, you get the lowest possible interest rate you get on that. You get all the incentives and all the tax benefits that they're offering where you live now to, to be a first-time home buyer. And they're huge. Yeah, no, no, no. A, you 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 pass the test with me. I, if I were you, this is the time. All right, Father, you mind if I do a follow-up with you in, a, I don't know, maybe six months or so, a couple months down the road. I'll let you know how it goes. I hope you will, Alan. Thanks for the call. Good luck. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones. Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi, Alex. How you been? I've been okay. Yeah, my question is to you. Um, You know how everybody's getting unemployed? Yes. What are the chances of the people in the radio working like you and your your, your buddies, right, um, getting uh, unemployed? Well, uh, look, you have to understand that uh, in the radio business it works a little differently because we have contracts. All right. And the contract says that uh, we're paid through the end of the contract. And so uh, uh, we're not really in the same position. All right. Uh, that was just my question. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a contract, so... Uh, now, will the economy affect me? Of course it will. Uh, how will it affect me? Well, uh, some bad ways, uh, clearly, uh, uh, you know, advertising uh, business uh, across the board in every medium is being affected uh, by the economy. That's, that's the bad news. Uh, the good news is if you have a job, you have a contract, and you have money, it's the best time ever to buy cars... Houses, uh, or anything at the store. If you've been at the department store and you see the signs that say sixty and seventy percent off, yeah, uh, but, um, what it, happens when your contract expires? Well, my contract expires in two thousand twelve, so it's um, not a, yeah, again in two thousand twelve. It's going to be an issue. All right, but I'm uh, I'm banking on the economy improving by two thousand twelve. All right. Can you hit me up with George W. Bush style? George W. Bush style, what would that be? I'm um, getting shot by Dick Cheney. <laughs> I don't All right. Yeah, George W. Bush style. Give him give him his well, give him what he wants. That was Dick Cheney. Did you tell? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. No, I think by the end of my contract the economy will have turned around. Economy's gonna be good, good, good at that time, because every time you've got very bad times, they are followed by very good times. Example, after the Depression, 1929-1933, approximately, uh, we had uh, World War II, followed by one of the greatest economic expansions of that time in history, following World War II. Uh, 1987, we had a stock market crash, followed by the bull market of the 1990s, and uh, it went through the roof. And you remember the 90s, right? Remember the dot-coms? Remember how business was in the 90s? Well, things weren't so good at the end of the 70s uh, through into the 80s. But uh, after that, things got really great. So uh, I think by 2012, another election year, that the economy will have completely turned around at that time. 
But who knows? What do I know? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Alan on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. And I have to help on this, Tom. Sure. Uh, we have a home here in California, and we had a little extra money, so we decided to go ahead and invest. So we decided to buy three homes in Atlanta, Georgia. Right at the time, the homes were, you know, everybody wanted to move to Atlanta. So we were able to pay the notes. The notes, for example, were $1,000. We found out that people couldn't pay, only go only pay like seven, $800. So we are coming out of the pocket every month to pay the, the additional $300, which, which we were okay with. But then my wife lost her job. Then we had to go back and pull out a home equity line of credit on our home here in California. Now that has exhausted all that. So we're trying to figure out, should we go ahead and file foreclosure, or does that go file bankruptcy? Well, understand, this is a question for an accountant and an attorney. Okay. I'm okay. not going to pretend I have that kind of expertise. All I'm going to say is, what were you thinking? I, I don't know. It was a time I, my nephew was going to college out there. We decided to go out there. We saw a lot of vacant homes, and people were moving out there. Yeah, but you, you know, know when, when, you, when your nephew goes to college, he rents a room, or he gets a roommate, or he moves into a dorm room. Right, right. This idea that you're going to buy a house, it's about profit from from the real estate boom. Come on. Right, yeah. So we're just trying to see, because we want to buy another home here in California. But Wait a minute, you're talking about being foreclosed or declaring bankruptcy. Right, if we, do, if we file bankruptcy, then we won't be able to file another home for like four or five years. Let me right? tell you, if you get foreclosed, it's not going to be much better. Right. I mean, okay. why, why are you talking about buying houses? Haven't you learned your lesson? You, you, you've you gotten your ass kicked by this real estate uh, debacle. Right. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to sell them now. But, of course, we, the home, for example, is like 120 and the homes in the area are selling for like 110 So we're going to – either way, we're going to lose money. You are better off losing money than declaring bankruptcy or being foreclosed upon. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. You are better off losing. I got you. Don't need to see an attorney or an accountant to know that. Take right. the loss. No. By the way, the losses are tax uh, write-offs, as you know. Right. Right. Okay. Now, okay. I, that's something to talk about with your accountant. Right. Okay. Thanks a lot, Tom. All right. Take care. Depends on the amount of the losses and what have you, but uh, oh, you're always better off taking a financial loss than just filing bankruptcy. I mean, if you could afford to withstand the loss, withstand the loss. Chalk it up to being a moron, a greedy moron. Well, my nephew was going to school in Atlanta across the country, so I decided we do go look at houses, buy him a house. When I went to college, I couldn't find an apartment. We're going to buy him a house. That's why we're in the mess we're in, folks. People saying stuff like that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, a lot of money calls today. A lot of money calls. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Yeah, I want to talk to you about uh, what's going on with the unemployment and something that has to do with my union. All right. Uh, my union is probably they're, probably, they're really billion strong. It's in the L.A. area. They've done a lot of construction in the L.A. area, wherever. And uh, there's a lot of people out of work because the acts also what they're doing, and it's just putting a lot of our our uh, union brothers uh, out of work. Who's putting your union brothers out of work? It's our union. Well, well wait a minute. What's putting your union brothers out of work is that we're in a recession, bordering on a depression. Right. It's not the union that's putting you out of work. Well, no, I I totally understand that the recession has a lot to do with it, but every year in no, the recession is the reason for the season. Right, right. Okay, but when all, companies well, are slashing expenses and firing employees, they don't need office space to put employees in. They've just gotten rid of employees. Right. They don't but, need to build anything. Right. I I totally understand. The that. union did not make that happen. R right. But the thing is, is what they're doing illegally is just screwing so much up. And I've contacted people and everyone, and no one wants to touch it. And one of the big reasons for that is because when voting time comes, the first thing we do is get a book 
in our mail stating to vote for this individual. Well, you know, a union is only as strong as its members. If your union, uh, uh, and by the way, I don't know what you could have that's worse than the recession, making things bad for members of your union. But if you got some kind of corruption or some kind of malfeasance in your union, uh, if the people in the union are not willing to stand up and say something about that, then that's what you get. Yeah, w yeah, we've already tried that. And as a matter of fact, my friend put up a website, and apparently one of the business agents got wind of it. And I got thrown in the soup when I didn't even sign in for it. And basically, it does happen. It's they get blackballed, and the blackball there is a list such as list, and I I didn't get blackballed because I had to go down there and say, hey, wait a minute, this wasn't me. But yeah, I totally understand. Um, but some of the some of these unions, but some of the things that they're doing, well, it's just it's wrong. Well, I mean, the I know the recession's in, but it's it just it's still wrong. You can always hire an attorney. You can always talk to the National Labor Relations Board. Uh, you can do these things. But well, you know what, Tom? Thank you, and I'm going to try that. And uh, can you take me out with a bong hit? I certainly can. <coughs> Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM Tom like it 1-800-5800-866 The Tom Likas Show It's The Tom Likas Show Coming to you from Hollywood, California 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And we continue with your telephone calls about anything and everything. And a lot of it's about money. Wow. Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Is that you? Did you want to talk to Tom? Uh, actually, uh, Tom, it's, it's, it's me, Alan. I said, Dad, is that you? Yeah, yes. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Hi, Father. How are you? Great. <laughs> Tom, I need your help. I'm um, here. When, I'm 28 years old. I live at home with my folks and my family. Uh, I have a good job. I have about 50000 saved. I have a FICO score about 812. Uh, no debt. The only debt I got is uh, a car payment for about 19000 left. Uh, but my problem is I live at home and I want to move out, but I can't afford a home at this point because I don't have 20%. And my other option is is renting, but everyone's telling me not to rent and not to throw my money away. Everybody doesn't know what they're talking about. You know, I have spent a good part of my adult life renting apartments. Right. And uh, these people who talk about, you know, never do something because of the tax benefits. Let me just right. say this. It's right. something I've learned the hard way. Let me give you an example. Getting married. People say, well, look at the deductions you get. Yeah, right. but look how much you have to spend on a wife. Exactly. Her clothing, her food, her car payments, her cell phone. Not to mention all right. you have to listen to all the time. Right, right. I mean, whatever they give you as a tax benefit pales in comparison to how much it's going to cost. Same thing with having a baby. Oh, you know, we have a baby, we get a tax exemption. Yeah, but do you think that pays the cost of having a baby? You're going to spend way more on that baby than you're going to get in tax benefits. Right. When you buy a house or a condominium, oh, sure, you get a tax deduction. By the way, at your age, uh, you may not even need all of that tax deduction. How much money do you make? Uh, 75 a year. All right, well, it would probably be helpful to you. But now think how much you would have to pay to get that tax deduction, okay? Right. Insurance, property taxes, maintenance on the home, wow. utilities. Ever try to heat a house as opposed to an apartment? No. Or air condition a house as opposed to an apartment? Mm. Do you know what that costs? You know, when the roof leaks, when the toilet leaks, who do you think is going to have to pay to fix that? You. Right. right. And, right. I, and I'm telling you, let me just give you an example. For this year, I own a, 
I own a property where I am going to get a tax deduction of $36,000. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. 36000 yeah, that's how much interest I will pay on that property in for 2008 when it's all totaled up, about 36000 To get that $36,000 deduction, I had to buy the house. <laughs> that's why I had to pay the principal. Mm. Uh, also, I had to pay insurance, several thousand dollars a year. Property taxes on my property alone, $30,000. Wow. So to get a $36,000 tax deduction, I have to spend $30,000 in property taxes. Jeez. I mean, you see what I'm telling you? The people you're talking to are not sophisticated about finance. They don't know what they're talking about. So, Tom... Going back to the car, I have a nineteen thousand on my car. I got fifty saved. What do you think? Should I just pay it off and get that out of out of the way? Well, how long have you been paying on your car? Since uh, July of '06. Yeah. See, here's a, here, here's another thing, and we've talked about this on the year. It's called the rule of seventy eight. Do you know what the rule of seventy eight is? I do not. They are real smart in the banking business. Have you ever looked at an amortized loan? Do you know what that means? No, I don't. Okay. When you pay, every month you're paying a certain amount towards the principal and a certain amount towards the finance charge on your car. Right. And it's amortized. And what that means is they invoke something called the rule of 78. Let's say you, just for the purposes of this example, let's say you had a one-year car loan. No one does, but let's say you did, just to make it an easy example. Right. Do you know what number, you, you know what the significance is of the number 78? It is the total of the numbers 1 through 12. Okay. Okay? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stick with me on this. Right. <laughs> In the first month of your one-year car loan, right. you would think you would pay an equal amount of interest every month, right? Right. But you don't. They front load the interest using the rule of 78s. Right. So in a one-year car loan, the first month, you would pay twelve seventy eighths of the total amount of interest. Wow. In the second month, you would pay eleven seventy eighths. In the third month, you would pay ten seventy eighths. Now think wow. about this for a second. Ten plus eleven plus twelve is twenty one. Uh, thirty three. You've now paid thirty three seventy eighths. Wow. Let's take it another month. Let's add nine nine seventy eighths. Now you're up to forty two seventy eight. In the first four months of a twelve month loan, you've paid more than half the interest. Mm -hmm. so, so now let's say you had that one year loan and you came to me at six months in and you said, Well, should I pay that loan off? Right. The answer is no. Right. Because you've already paid the bulk of the interest. Right. Right. You need to look at an amortization schedule, which programs like Quicken can do. I know there are amortization uh, calculators on the web if you just Google for one. You need to figure out what percentage of the interest you've already paid. And if you've already paid more than half the interest, if you've paid a substantial amount more than half the interest, don't pay that loan off now. That, right. for the rest of the time, is it, it's like a, the, the rest of the time compared to the first part that you've been paying is like a free ride. I believe uh, after six years, Interest will be up to ten thousand. I have so far paid about three thousand of interest. I'm looking at, at my statement. So right, well, you can't write any of that off. If you if you still got seventy percent of the interest left to pay and you are capable of paying it, pay it. Pay it. Okay. Pay it. But here's the thing: uh, if you are serious about buying a house because you want to live in a house, that's different. Right. Right. right, and you see, you you don't sound to me like somebody who wants to live in a house. You sound to me like somebody who everyone said should buy a house. Right, right. But you don't sound like you really want one or have any passion to live in one. No, I don't. I want to rent. I want to, you know, uh, be twenty eight, rent, party hard, and just not worry about you know just the little things that break down, the oh. roof, the the plumbing. Well, then what you should do is uh, keep your debts low. Keep an emergency fund. I'm recommending to people now 12 months of emergency expenses. Right. Have a year's worth sitting there in the bank in case you lose your job. Okay. And uh, then after that, uh, you know, save and party and enjoy your life. Well, dude, Tom, can you take me out uh, Latino style? I certainly can. Latinos, you shut up!
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Dad. How you doing? All right, son. Good. I really need your help. Okay. Uh, I'm 25, graduated from uh, college and uh, with a degree in uh, film. Started working in the industry, did it for about two years, and realized I really don't want anything to do with it. It's, the industry is terrible. I, I didn't enjoy anything about it. And now I have no idea what to do. Well, that's uh, that's common. I, I, by the way, it's a good reminder to everybody who's thinking about getting into any business. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you a story about me. Okay. Uh, when I was 14, mm -hmm. I loved listening to the radio. And I wanted to work in the radio business. Mm -hmm. And I was convinced I wanted to do that. Then whatever it took, that's what I wanted to do. Right. And I had an aunt named Rita who was so smart. She was one of the original women on Wall Street in the 60s when there were no women on Wall Street, when it was all guys. She worked for John Levine and Company on Wall Street, one of the biggest bond traders on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was just the smartest and really like my mentor. And uh, she said to me, if you want to work in the radio business, here's what you do. Write a letter to three of the people you admire and ask them what to do and how to do it. Right. And I did that. I wrote to three different people. Two of the three responded. And one of them said, why don't you come down to the studio and watch me work? Yeah. And, and I went and I watched what it took to do the job. I took pictures of the studio. Yeah. I learned about, you know, what went into that and whether it would be something I would actually have fun doing. Well, at first it was. I interned for two years in school at major at, at, at major studios, and at first I loved it. And once I wasn't an intern it was, and yeah. it was a little more serious, I kind of saw the real side of it. And also with that, yeah. just how the whole industry is just... Up and down and up and what, down. What I, you need to try to do is find a related job and see if you'd like that. The Tom Likas Show.